Eiffel. London, 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 London. Eiffel. This is Coogan Cassius for from London. We're at the Nottingham Arena for the press conference between Carl Froch and Youssef Mack, head of their fight on November 17th at the Capital FM Arena. With me, I've got the IBF super middleweight champion and all-round male stud, Carl Froch. <laughs> How you doing? All right? Yeah, did you like that intro? I loved it. it gets Probably weren't listening until I said male stud, were you? I had the male stud one, and I'm like a male stud at the minute, a racehorse, because I'm, I'm abstaining, as you know, and I feel like I'm ready to... Unload. Yeah, you leave your unloading till after the interview. Um, Carl, you returned to Nottingham 17th of November after a glorious night against Boutte. Um, what did you make of the press conference today? Obviously, not a lot of shown by Yusuf Mech in this press conference. Well, from body language and whatever, what were you taking from it? It was quiet. He didn't have much to say. Um, he looks confident. You know, he's, he's got a little smile about him and he looks like he means business. But this, this is a world title fight for him. He's coming down in weight, but he doesn't look like a massive light heavyweight. He's, what is he, six foot, six foot one? We seem to be sort of at eye level and I'm six foot. So he's not as tall as I thought he was and he looked quite slim. He's got some big guns on him. Um, so I don't think doing super middleweight is going to be a big problem for him. I was kind of hoping he was going to half kill himself like Chad Dawson did when he fought Ward because when these light heavyweights come down to super middleweights, usually they're just drained and they're just ready to fall over. But it looks like he's pretty much there already on the weight and it looks like he means business. And, you know, this is a world title fight, so he's going to come and he's going to try and cause an upset. He's, he, can, he can punch a bit because he's a light heavyweight, so he's going to probably try and catch me out early on and maybe let some, you know, let a barrage of shots go early. So I need to be... I need to be cute and clever and, you know, box behind my jab and just find the feet for three or four rounds before I close the distance and close that, close that fighting gap and start letting some um, artillery go. Um, with regards to training camp, if your training camp goes very well, your, sec your training camp immediately after, do you tend to keep it the same if everything's gone well for the, for the previous fight like it did for Butte? Um, keep it. I mean, I always do my runs and I always do my groundwork, my push-ups, my sit-ups, my pull-ups, my dips and my triceps and that, you know. So when you say keep it the same, I, I do... I just wondered if there's any, you know, if it, it was anything different you would do for this fight against Mac that maybe you did or didn't do against Butte? Um, probably not, no. I mean, I'll train just as hard as I did for Butte, as I will now, as I am doing for Mac. You know, the training, the physical side of it, the runs and the groundwork and the sparring. It'll be just as hard, to be honest. I mean, you've got to be in tip-top shape for every single fight. If I turned up 50% fit for Mac, then I'm probably going to get beat. It's as simple as that. I can't just take my foot off the gas and think, oh, I've got an easy fight. There's no such thing as an easy fight. So I turn up prepared for whoever I'm fighting. I've, done, I've made the mistake in the past of not turning up 100%, and I nearly came unstuck against a guy called Dale Westerman. It was a warm-up fight before I boxed Brian McGee defending my British title. Um, I think I defended my Commonwealth against um, Dale Westerman and it was a hard night's work, it was tough. I tore my bicep, I hurt my arm and it was nine or ten rounds of me getting my head punched in until I closed the show in round nine or ten, I think it was round nine. But that was supposed to be an easy walk in the park night for me, no problem. And that was probably one of my hardest bloody fights because I wasn't turned, I wasn't fully prepared because I took him lightly. So I'm too professional to not take this guy serious and for the next five weeks now, it's the business end of the um, fitness. I'm sparring a lot. I'm doing some hard, long runs, some hill, hill work, which is very difficult. And, you know, my groundwork steps up a level. So I'm feeling it. I'm sat here now rather than standing because, you know, my back's aching and my legs are aching. I've been running this morning and I'm in the gym this afternoon. And, you know, it's, it's building up. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. And it gets harder until fight week. And then I take my foot off the gas, recover, and then explode on fight night. So I'm going to be ready. Is this a possibility that this is the last time um, your Nottingham fans will see you fight in this country? Yeah, potentially this could be my last fight in, <coughs> in Nottingham because I've got a rematch with Butte next year if that fight happens. That's in Montreal. And if, if the fight ha with Kessler happens, you know, it's probably not going to come to Nottingham. It's probably, unless it happens at the city ground, it's probably going to have to happen in a bigger venue somewhere else in the country um, or maybe even over in Denmark again. Um, so I think this probably will be the last fight for me in my home city of Nottingham unless we get the city ground next year which is 
you know, looking at the maths and looking at the timing and with the football schedule, they don't finish till mid-May. It's going to be difficult. So, you know, I think that's why people have virtually sold this place out, why people have bought the tickets, because if it's the last chance they're going to get to see myself, who, you know, I'm being called a living legend, I'm being called a superstar of the sport. I'm not saying that myself, but from what I'm seeing and reading, people are quite impressed with what I've been doing and how I perform my actions in the ring and the love in it. And, you know, the place is nearly sold out and I'm a big name, especially in Nottingham. So I'm looking forward to another night of a of, of full house, a packed house with plenty of noise, plenty of atmosphere. And um, the fans can expect a great performance. These are the same things people say about me. <laughs> All right, OK. In what I do, that's what, I'm not just saying it, like you just said, people, you can't help what people say, obviously if they're calling you a living legend, the superstar, that's what they call me. Is this where I stop laughing? No, no, I'm being serious. <laughs> <laughs> now you're good at what you do, without blowing smoke up your backside. You're good, aren't you? Well, you know, we try, anyway. But um, I was talking to Tony Bell the other day, and he obviously um, referred to an interview as what you just said there, a living legend, and you've been sparring with him as well, so, you know, that's obviously, must be very good sparring for the Perrier. Yeah, he's, he's biased, Bellew, because he's my friend and um, I'm a good friend of his and I've got so much respect for him. So anything I say about him, and I, I give him a good, I give him props and, you know, people say, oh, he's kissing his ass." But let me tell you something, I'm really, really looking forward to watching Tony Bellew become world champion, which I strongly believe he's going <clears> to. <throat> and, uh, you know, just as my career is coming to an end, I'm 35 now, so maybe, maybe a year or two, maybe two years in, in the future when I'm maybe retired, maybe, maybe not. I'm not saying I'm retiring in two years. I'll be 37. Tony Bellew, who's, what is he? He's not even 30 yet. He's going to be world champion defending this title. And I'm looking forward to travelling around. Kell Brook as well. But, you know, more immediately, I'm looking forward to watching Tony Bellew defend his world title in and around. I can sit at ringside and support him. And I'm going to enjoy, you know, following that journey because at the minute we're, we're getting on so well we're sparring well we're both in there meaning busy he's letting big shots go I'm letting big shots back go and it's bringing us both on you know it's getting us both ready we're, we're fighting on the 17th of November on the same card and um, he looks at me as world champion he puts me on a pedestal and he, put, he talks very highly of me you know and rightly so I'm three times world champ he's, he's got a lot of respect for me but equally I've got respect for him because he's a top top fighter and he's, he's improved so much since the Nathan Cleverly fight which I scored the fight. I thought he'd won it by a round. Or I thought, you know, best ways for Cleverly, it would have been a, would have been a draw. I, th I think if that was a draw, you could say, okay, he's had, he's had, a, he's had a nice decision there. But I thought Bellew did enough. But maybe I was watching it with my my Bellew goggles, you know, because I'm a, I'm a good friend of his. But um, I'm really looking forward to him becoming world champion, following him around, and you know, he's on my card, and it's going to be a great atmosphere in the changing rooms, and um, I'm looking forward to an exciting future. And just finally, um, what do you make of uh, Emir Khan's decision to go with Virgil Hunter? Uh, Andre Ward's train, obviously, know Andre very well and Virgil. So what do you make of that decision to leave Freddie Roach to go to Virgil Hunter? Um, I can understand him leaving Freddie Roach. I don't think he got the um, attention he needed on the build-up to his last fight. Um, and he obviously ended that fight really bad. He got devastatingly knocked out again um, in spectacular fashion, um, as he does when he goes over. And he's had to pick a new trainer. So, you know, you've got to, you've got to say that Virgil Hunter knows his stuff. He trains Andre Ward, Olympic gold medalist, undefeated professional. You know, he's beat, he's beat the great Carl Froch, so he's doing something right. So he's picking a trainer there that he feels is going to take him to the next level and maybe teach him an element of his game that he hasn't got, maybe defensively, I don't know, because he does need to brush up on his defences, as he will tell you himself. Um, who else would you pick for, to train Carl? I don't know. I mean, there's there's a couple of decent trainers out there, but there's there's nobody in Britain really except for Robert McCracken. And there's other trainers obviously that are doing well, but none that you could probably see Khan training with. You know, Khan being the person he is, and you know, by his own admission, he's a big shot and a superstar. So he ain't gonna come down to Britain and and train with with you know somebody. I'm not even gonna chuck a name in there, but he ain't gonna do that. So he's picked Virgil Hunter because he's putting Virgil Hunter on, on this pedestal because he's got Andre Ward who's doing very well and he's unbeaten. So probably a good decision. It may, it may do him good, but we'll see. We'll see when he, when he fights and who he fights and how he performs. Just we'll, we'll sit and wait and watch. Good luck to him. All right, Carl Froch, thank you very much for talking to iFilm London again. And uh, we still have to do that little drive around Nottingham where you talk to me about how genetically gifted you are. I'll take you around the restaurants that keep you in great shape forget the genetics it's all about the food as well you gotta eat the right foods i'll take you around some nice leading up to your fight i'll pick a day and i'll it's only 150 miles from where i am i'll come to where you are no i'm being serious 
Didn't have to laugh at that. I'm it being serious. Like long, it sounds like a long way, 150 miles. No, come up to Nottingham. I'll take you out around Nottingham. It can be my treat, and we'll go to a couple of nice restaurants. Well, one, we don't want to overeat, but there's a couple of nice restaurants, and we'll pick one, and we'll have a nice night. Bring your camera as well. We'll do an interview. <laughs> okay, no problem. Carl Frotch, thank you very much. Short from London, and good luck on the 17th of November. Nice one. Thanks very much. Thanks, man. See you.